Hey, howdy, hey, viewers, it's me, Chuck Chumbucket. Guys, this video is going to contain spoilers for Thor The Dark World and Avengers Endgame, so you have been warned. My gosh, can you believe it? It's already been 10 months since Avengers Endgame came out. And they brought back to life many of our favorite superheroes from Marvel. Well, that and killing and getting rid of many of our other favorite superheroes. Wait, but then of course we remember that one of the biggest letdowns of Avengers Endgame was that Loki, the god of mischief and the brother of Thor, was not resurrected from his apparent death in Avengers Infinity War. Which disappointed and broke the hearts of many, and I mean many Loki lovers around the world. But something that puzzled not just me, but many others while we were watching Avengers Infinity War, was the time heist in New York. But then the Super Bowl came along, and along with showing trailers for WandaVision and uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier series, it showed a trailer for the Loki television series. I'm gonna burn this place to the ground. And so that got me thinking about uh, a theory, just a small one. So, um, to continue for my study with that theory, I went to watch Thor The Dark World. But then I came across the all-too-familiar scene of Loki faking his death after he got stabbed. But then, that scene got me thinking, and that thought turned into a theory. And that theory turned into a video. And today, I'm going to show you that video. Today, I'm going to be telling you how I think Loki survived his fake death in Thor The Dark World. So to start a story, we have to start way back, all the way back to 2012. Wait, well, the 2012 in the time heist in Avengers Endgame, uh, if that makes sense. So, as you know, Many of the Avengers in Avengers Endgame went back in time to 2012 Avengers to retrieve the Space Stone from the past Avengers from that timeline. But Tony Stark's and uh, Scott Lang's attempt to retrieve the Space Stone fails once uh, Tony Stark turns away and the Hulk knocks the Space Stone right out of his hands. And fortunately, the Tesseract slid all the way across the room and landed right in front of Loki's feet. And since all the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents around him were distracted by 2012 Tony Stark getting a heart attack, Loki seized the opportunity and clutched the Tesseract and used it to create a wormhole to escape his confinement and land in an unknown destination. And the more I think about it, the more I think that the Loki from Thor 2 actually died and the Loki from Avengers Endgame 2012 traveled all the way into the Dark World and took the persona of the Loki that just died. Which would then mean that the Loki from Thor Ragnarok and Avengers Infinity War is the same Loki from Avengers Endgame that traveled with the Tesseract. Whoa. Just think, in Thor The Dark World, we see, supposedly, the death of Loki. But later, we see that Loki is actually alive and goes to his dad and lies about his son's death. We found a body. Loki. But what's really significant about this scene is that it takes place one year after the time heist for the Space Stone is supposed to occur. So it's well known that the Space Stone can let you travel, well, anywhere you want. Not only in your dimension, but in many others as well. So, for my theory, I think that Loki, he traveled from his dimension in the 2012 uh, time heist area, uh, all, the, for, all the way from that dimension, to the dimension we know as the MCU. The dimension where Iron Man 3 took place, the uh, normal uh, Avengers in 2012 took place, and uh, Infinity War took place. So there, once in the other dimension, he would stay undercover because, well, he just destroyed New York City. I mean, like, he killed millions of people. Who, who wouldn't want to stay undercover after doing that? But then he realizes that the Loki in the dimension he traveled to was killed. So then, I think that he said, hmm, well, the Loki in my dimension I went to is, was killed. Maybe I could take his place and overrule Asgard and take my place as the rightful king. Genius! So, I think Loki was killed. Like, killed killed. Like, you're, uh, you're dead and you're not coming back from death killed. And once the Loki from the 2012 Avengers Endgame dimension found out that uh, the Loki in his dimension was killed, he would travel, using the Tesseract, all the way to the Dark World to the crime scene. And once Loki had arrived at the Dark World, he would take the identity of an Asgardian soldier after killing him and make his way to Asgard, kidnap Odin, then take Odin to New York City, and then take his place as the rightful ruler of Asgard after usurping the throne. And according to my theory, from then on, Loki's life will work out just like it does in the movies. He will rule over Asgard for a few years, be discovered as a fraud by Thor in Thor Ragnarok, and die the same way he does in Avengers Infinity War. Okay, I know this is a lot to take in, or maybe you're just completely confused and you don't know what I'm talking about. If so, tell me in the comments and I'll try to remake this video in a, in a better way. And you might be asking, 
Well, in the movies, we've only seen the Tesseract slash Space Stone transport others across the, their universe, not across other dimensions. How could Loki use the Tesseract for interdimensional travel? For an answer for that, I say, it says so on Marvel Cinematic Universe Wiki.com that the Space Stone can move across dimensions. So, and you also might be saying, well, how come when Thor and Loki became best buds in Thor Ragnarok, how come Loki never said, hey, I'm from another dimension, dude? Uh, well, because Loki is literally the god of mischief. Like, he's never been completely honest, right? I am sure that this theory is true, or at least plausible. I'm excited to see what the Loki miniseries on Disney Plus will be like. Or who knows, maybe the miniseries on Disney Plus will prove that my theory is correct. Or maybe the miniseries will go as far as to make it the whole plotline of their TV show. Maybe the whole, uh, maybe the whole TV show will be uh, about what Loki does in between leaving New York and eventually becoming the king of Asgard. <sighs> but whatever it is, I'm just happy I made a good theory video on my YouTube channel. And um, I, if it's bad and you don't understand anything and you're confused, please let me know in the comments. I'll remake this video and I'll try to make it shorter and less complicated. Anyway, I got a ton of social media now, so it'd be kind of nice if, you know, you were to follow my Instagram, my TikTok, and even follow my letterbox if, well, you have it. Before I end the video, I'd like to give a couple of last shoutouts to a bunch of friends who ask for the attention. The first one goes to Maro Herrera Orduna, the next one goes to Rudy Duchenoy, and the last one goes to Cesar de la Torre. Thanks, my friends. You're very cool. Anyway, I guess that's the end of the video, guys. Um, uh, please like and subscribe. And I shall see you guys later.